Hello, this is Wayne here, and I am with Doc Bishop. He is going to talk about Hello, some of our, he's going to talk about some of our classes that we're going to be offering. Aloha is actually going to be offering after hours classes after the paid for seminars. And these are going to be free classes for students and members of Aloha. You have to be a member of Aloha in order to engage with these classes and these after hours projects. But really, Aloha wanted to give back to the community. They know the locksmith is out there and they need some more information. So they figured, hey, if you're coming to the event, why not maximize the amount of knowledge that we can cram into your head while you're there. Now, myself and Doc are going to be teaching some of these classes. So, Doc, go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about some of the classes that you are going to be offering. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Doc. I'm a member of Aloha as, as well, and I run the Outlet Key Shop in East Tennessee. Um, Aloha has been a great source of education and networking for locksmiths, and I feel it's uh, a a good bet for any locksmith out there and uh, looking to learn more in advance in the in the industry alo is a great place to do that i'm going to be teaching three of the evening seminars at this upcoming 2024 vegas aloha the first seminar i'm going to be teaching i believe is scheduled for monday and it is called unlocking the vin code um as locksmiths we do a lot of automotive locks um very difficult in the industry to really know what you're talking about until you you see it so the 17 digits of the vin number is is a structured code a a um plethora of information if you will it not only tells you where the vehicle was manufactured it also tells you what plant the vehicle was manufactured in what country it's intended for that makes a difference because well canada canada has different laws than america does so depending on if it's manufactured for the canadian market versus the american market might justify if it's going to take a transponder key or not all the way down to which number on that vin number tells me the true year of the vehicle I don't care what month and day it was manufactured. That that doesn't tell me what year the vehicle is. The manufacturers stamp it based on the VIN number for the true year of the vehicle. And that hands down is going to narrow down what key you're looking for, especially on the split years. Wow, that's pretty and intense. That's gonna be I didn't even know that. Uh, I knew that there are some major issues. And I've heard, you know, I don't do a lot of automotive work, but I've heard around the water cooler you know, a, a lot of people have had problems with that. This Ford came from Mexico or this car came from Canada. And all of a sudden people can't find the correct blank, the, you know, the transponders or some of the, you know, the, the other mechanics are just not working the way they would in a standard North American vehicle. So you've kind of like extracted out some kind of formula to really be able to pinpoint where this vehicle came from and what you need to know about it as a locksmith so that you can properly program it and generate a key. Absolutely. One of the biggest misconceptions is Canada passed a law. So any vehicle street legal in Canada after 2006 must have a transponder key in it. However, we have 2021 Kias running around the U.S. with no chips. So that's one of the biggest differentials is which ones take transponders and which transponder frequencies are used in that country. You mentioned Mexico. Mexico does use different transponder frequencies than America in some cases. Right. Right. That's great. I think that's going to be an amazing class. Uh, I think I think people will really, really be able to utilize that. And um, it, it's, it's it's information you have to have. Yeah, and it's been absolutely a, a lifesaver for me as an automotive smith to be able to tell you exactly what year this vehicle was, or in some cases, what plant this vehicle came from would dictate which chip it has, and any number of things to the point where I've seen enough VIN numbers that I can look at the first three digits of the VIN number and tell you kind of what the vehicle is. It's a German passenger car, BMW, or something along those lines. <laughs> You're the sight reader of VIN numbers, are you? <laughs> uh, something along those lines. Uh, VIN whisperer, I guess you could you could call it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I'm doing some classes as well, and really we'll focus on yours, but I'll just throw mine in here too. So for Monday, I will be doing no, uh, building some reoccurring revenue, um, like like you know trying to get some monthly revenue built up. Uh, and you can do that through smart home automation, selling alarm systems, cameras, uh, things that need monitoring and maintenance. And so you're not only making the money. Residual. 
right. You're not only making the money on the initial sale and charging my typical locksmith rates, which are premium rates anyway, now I'm getting some monthly income that comes back. If we set that up properly here pretty soon, we'll have you know thousands and thousands of dollars that just come in like a crock pot, set it and forget it. So that's going to be some interesting stuff too for the guys out there that are that are looking to really build something that they can sell at the end of their career. Yeah, and, and and carry that on with uh, the extra bread and butter. Absolutely, absolutely. So what do we have going on? What other classes are you going to be going over? Okay, my, my second class is is sight reading. Um, I call it the art of scoping. I'm one mm -hmm. of uh, one, uh, my go-to method for manufacturing a key for majority of locks is going to be my scope. It's a modified otoscope that allows me to look inside the lock and kind of judge where the wafers sit at a nail value and extract mm -hmm. the data that I need to be able to cut a key. So not only is it kind of impressive when you just walk up to the customer's door and put your, your little peeper scope inside the door and click it back a few times, write a few numbers down, maybe argue with the door a little bit, walk back to your van and cut a key and unlock the door. And you haven't even looked inside yet. Um, it, 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 it kind of adds to that, the mystique that the locksmith carries, uh, the, the wizardry, I guess you could call it. Um, but this is a, a crash course in how to do that as a locksmith. Most of us already have some sort of access to a scope and it's how to use this scope in order to beat a little bit more money out of that horse. Um, we teach it based on a Ford system, believe it or not, uh, where I, I've gotten to the level where I will scope a standard Ford eight cut and damn near transpose it straight onto a transponder key without cutting a, a mechanical key first to test my work. I'm wow. that confident in my ability to scope them. And this class, within about two hours, I'm going to shove that into your head as well. That's amazing. That's really awesome. And those are some skills. See, what I really like about these after hours classes is this is like you're going to get great education during the main paid for classes. But a lot of this is some gritty, like, you know, some some down and dirty work related things that are going to help you with your business. Like when the going gets tough. These are the tools that you're going to be able to utilize to get you out of a jam, right? Okay, well, your leashy tool failed. You know, something exactly. else didn't work, right? You don't have all your fancy, you know, crutches that a lot of these guys lean on. You got to be able to go back and go old school and really figure out what that problem is. And that's what separates the true, real professionals from the trunk slammers that watched a YouTube video and said, hey, I'm a locksmith. I bought a key machine, a programmer, and I got a Kia. Let's go, you know? Yeah, let's go retumble that lock. <laughs> let's go retumble some tumblers and get to tumbling, right? So we've heard all of that. Uh, that I can definitely see. I mean, obviously, you're a veteran of the game. Uh, we've been we've we've been chatting about doing and working together for a while, actually. There's some well. time and now, yeah. Yeah, and it's great. We're going to be able to do it at this at this convention and just right here doing this little interview talking about these different classes that we offer is really really amazing. So for my second day. Did you uh, we're going to be doing the um, fields uh, or um, field management. So if you own multiple trucks, you can basically switch over to electronic invoicing. We're going to go over QuickBooks. If you're still on paper, we can get you into electronics. We can get you, you know, to create an electronic invoice. And really, there's so much more that actually gets offered there. There are systems out there that will send your customer a text message when you schedule that appointment put it on your calendar for you, show you where you're at, give them a reminder. So it prevents those gone on arrivals or those customers that, oops, I forgot. And now your day is host, right? It's going to solve all of those problems for you. So we'll go, we'll get into that as well for my second day class. There's so much stuff to talk about. It's easily an hour or two uh, in that genre as well. Oh yeah. There's a lot of that stuff to break down for content, uh, cu customer. Re what's CRM stand for again? Customer, customer retention. Yeah. retention managers and things along those lines. Um, yeah, it, did you hear, uh, did you hear about the, the, the uh, attendance this year? We're back to pre -COVID it's amazing. Numbers? It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. This is going to be, this is pre COVID numbers. I'm thinking. Um, I was, I was told that they have a thousand attendees already signed up for it. It's going to be an incredible event. Uh, they, they really need it too. They really need it too. And I'm glad to see that people are coming back out. They're coming for that hands-on training. I don't care who you are, what industry you are, or what you're trying to teach or what you're trying to learn. Me being a video guy, you can only learn so much from a video. In this trade, you have to have hands-on. If you don't have hands-on, 
it's not you're 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 not going to absorb a hundred percent. You're going to be drinking from that fire hose, and you know eighty percent is going to splash off of your face because you don't have the feel, you don't have the sound, you don't have the touch, you don't have the grit, you don't have the the movement, you don't have the the key vices and all the different little things that you need to feel while you're doing this. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of idiosyncrasies that it's uh, you, you just got to have in your hands in order to to really get the feel for it. You can be explained it until you're blue in the face. For example, motorcycles. That was one thing that I was asked to put a class together for. So I went ahead and did an intro into motorcycle key crafting because they're a beast all in their own. A lot of your automotive guys will will play with motorcycles. Some of your shops will play with motorcycles. And I use the word play because they go so much deeper than most locks misimagine. From those uh, uh, magnetic key shutters, there's a little uh, hardened steel plate that covers the lock. And you've got to have magnets in a specific order. First time locksmiths see that I get phone calls all the time by, by text. Just what is this? What, what do I do to it? Uh, and finding those key blanks, a lot of vendors don't even carry them because there's so many different varieties and it's so unique to run across them all the way down to a lot of these newer bikes, depending on the engine size dictates which key blank you're going to need. It's it's gotten super complicated, and on top of that, you get into a lot of these newer ones. Also, are now getting high security keys. Like there's a Honda high security motorcycle. It works just like the Honda high security vehicles, with minor adjustments to it. You can even pick it with the same leashy. By the way, free helpful hint um, to the transponder systems and how to be able to program keys to these bikes. That is a great upsell. There is no reason to continue to let these guys on on the internet where you mail them the the ignition and the ecu and they flash the chip to it for 900 dollars and mail it back to you it's no more complicated than doing a bmw or a mercedes in the field it really isn't if you think like a locksmith and and look for the data that you're trying to extract wow that's that's amazing i don't even like to admit this but now you know where i'm at in my career i can kind of look back and laugh at myself a little bit I consider myself probably one of the, the top five safe technicians in Colorado. That means that I've never ran into a container that I could not open, right? V bank vault, high security, TL rated safe, all, all that fun stuff. Do you know what the they hardest get complicated. thing I ever opened is? Do you know what the hardest thing I ever opened is? No, what's that? A Vespa from Italy. Ha, ha, the keys ha, ha. were locked in the seat. And you have to turn the ignition thing and push a little button. I called down to the actual dealership. I did so much research. I called all my locksmith buddies, used all of my resources. I mean, I just got a tattoo. You know, I'm bleeding. I'm leaking all over the place. I've been working on this thing. This was supposed to be a 15-minute lockout. Three hours later, I'm rolling around on the ground covered in blood and gravel. And this thing is kicking my hiney. And I'm not joking. And I don't have leashy tools. I'm not an automotive guy. So, you know, doing all the scoping and all the other stuff that you guys do, I can't really do that. I don't have those resources. So I call down to the, the local dealership. I'm like, eventually, if we take enough parts off of this, we can open the seat, right? And no, they've said that they have had the engine out and you still can't open it. I'm not joking. It's so on eventually, the I yeah, finally yeah. found some linkage. I went to my safe routes. I got my scope out. I found the thing that I needed to poke, uh, and I poked it. Three and a half <laughs> hours later, in the heat, uh, sun, yeah. mud, and blood, it, it, was, it was embarrassing. It really, really was. I mean, it wasn't when you know what I'm talking about. And when yeah, you're uh, in that situation, it's crazy. <laughs> was, was that the, the Zadi Keyway? The, um, the look kind of... Uh, best I, way to I explain it is I, I, I just stumbled in. It could have been. I, I honestly, I it was it was a while ago, and I just I didn't even keep track of anything. I was like, "Look, man, I just need to get this seat open so I can collect my money and go home." Because that was those days too, where once I bid onto something, man, I'm like a pit bull. I'm not leaving until I get it. No locksmith yeah. is coming back back behind me to come clean up my work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, oh, I, absolutely. You know, I. I'm getting customers bringing me bikes from states away. So I've gotten a customer bring me a bike from North Carolina. One of the more memorable ones is I had a uh, Husqvarna brought in from uh, Kentucky. 
uh, customer who has been calling locksmith after locksmith after locksmith. I'm the first one that says, sure, I'll try it. By the time he gets the bike to me and I start ripping it apart, it had a Zotti keyway. It had a KTM dash cluster. It had a BMW ECU and was using a Ford chip. It was uh, a Franken bike, but uh, Zotti, I mean, um, Husqvarna wouldn't claim it. They said it was a BMW because it had a BMW ECU. BMW said, that, no, it's not a BMW. It's a Husqvarna. You need to take it to them. So the customer couldn't even take it to a dealership to have this key made. He didn't even ask me how much until after I had finished the job. It was one of those type of deals. And it's it's amazing to be able to offer that level of service. It really, it really, really is. And, and being, you know, not very many people have that privilege of being at that, that just that top level where, hey, man, if this guy can't do it, you're kind of host. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to figure it out. It's the, the data's here somewhere. Let me look at every chip in here until I find it. Right. And then you just isolated everything down and broke it apart, completely broke it down, and then saw, okay, this piece needs this, this one needs this, this one needs this. And when we put it, all the pieces to the puzzle in the correct section, you just had like 147 blue pieces that all looked the same and didn't know where they exactly where they needed to go until you were able to deconstruct it. Very, very cool. That, um, uh, that yeah. Vespa actually ended up working out well because I ended up having another shop that literally, literally had one torn apart, completely torn apart. All that was there was the clamshell seat. And because I had So you were able to see where there, the linkages were. Yeah. Well, I still had to drill in to poke my thing that I needed to poke, but- But you knew where to do it, where Vespa- Yep. There's little release trigger in there and I found it, but I was able to just know kind of right where it was. It was one hole, one shot, got my scope in there, saw it, see what I need to see. And then pop click, it was open. And that was, that's just a testament to there was no bike and they still couldn't get it open for crying out loud. And yeah, they, we're, they, we're, that was another one where they called two or three other locksmiths to come out and they couldn't get it either. Yeah, so. I, I I like to say that we're the people that the dealerships call when they can't figure it out. Right, and that's a that's a really really pl privileged place to be. But I just I think it's hilarious that you know out of all these bank vaults and all these high security safes and all this crazy stuff that people you know think is impossible to bypass or get into. What's the worst thing and the hardest thing I've ever opened in my career? A Vespa. Vespa <laughs> <laughs> from Italy. <laughs> hey, so, very, now in your cool. defense, though, those. Those are sidebar locks, and they're a little bit difficult to defeat. So you do have the, the, have some credit there. I, I I got it open. I didn't damage anything. The customer was happy. You know, I did. Well, what and, I you, could and do. you were able to turn it into two jobs. Right, right. And we didn't damage anything. And I learned a valuable lesson. I don't like to do automotive work. I really don't like to do scooters. So now everybody that calls in with a scooter <laughs> gets a gets another number. Gets referral. <laughs> gets a referral. It's a referral. So uh, I just wish I could send them to you, Doc. So um, any last words for any of the classes or any of the other stuff that you're offering? I mean, this is a really great opportunity, and I really hope that the people are taking advantage of it. I, I hope they are, too. I've seen a list of the of the evening seminars we've got upcoming in, and it's a pretty in, impressive list. I know a lot of the guys that are teaching these classes, and there is so much data to be learned out there. It's it's we we tried it it's at Savta and it worked out very very well and that's what we're we're doubling down here at at the Vegas 24 to really deliver an, an educational experience above and beyond what we've right, done right something that you're not going to get at a trade show like the trade no. show shows are great guess what they're about selling product the Aloha trade show this is about the people this is about the members about the and this education. is about the raw education that comes from world class instructors like yourself myself and several others i'll just go through the list real quick here so people will know we've heard your classes uh, we've also got mark dawson for financial reality check for your business uh, tuesday and thursday We've got Bill Dill with uh, Every Lock, One Key, Building Service for Packlock. Uh, we've got Tom Foxwell, Life Safety 101, Corey Friedman, uh, Magic in Locksmithing. We've got Adrian Holly, How to Change from One House to the House and Vice Versa. Uh, we've got Ryan Martin, The Simplest Access Control to Sell and Install. Uh, we've got Deviant nice. Olam who's going to be there, con uh, Covert Entry Methods and Niche Tools. John Payne That's is going to be, be doing... Yeah, Deviant Olin's got some cool stuff. I'm I'm interested with palling around with him a little bit too. Um, 
John Payne has uh, Lock Help 911, Top 10 Questions uh, Locksmiths Ask, and Hotel Lock Management Systems. And then we've got my classes. Uh, the only one that didn't get mentioned was the one on Thursday, which is Business Management and Startup 101. So if you want to learn how to become a business owner or start your own business and not get trapped in the trap of becoming your own employee and creating your own job, where now you had a job where you worked 40, 50 hours a week and you made a certain amount of money working for somebody else. But now you did the smart thing and you went and started your own company. Now you work 80 to 100 hours a week for the same amount of pay. If, if you don't not want less. To be <laughs> if not less. In the beginning, for sure. In the oh, beginning, yes. for sure. So if you don't want to fall into those traps, this would be a good class for you to take. This is great. Oh, yes. I appreciate you coming out today and uh, doing this interview with me. Uh, any last words for everybody? Uh, no, I just I can't wait to see everybody there. It's been it's been a minute since we've been able to get together and and have a convention of this size, and I'm just super excited to see everybody out there. So you see me around, just come on by and say hi. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same for me. Can't wait to see everybody there. Thank you so much for coming on with me today. Hopefully we'll have some other people take advantage Absolutely. of this Thank too. You. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. We appreciate you. Yes, sir.